A waiter on a cruise once told me a joke. He was only just learning English, and he was trying to figure out the best way to say this one. I wish I could remember it, but it had something to do with a genie providing someone with three wishes, as they do, but he couldn't find the word for genie. It was just wizard. Two days later on the cruise, I ran into the same waiter who, when he saw me, burst out laughing. When I asked him what's so funny, he said, you know, I'm, I'm still, still thinking, thinking on the wizard. The wizard. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to think on the wizard. Tourist traps. Urban Dictionary defines them as places specifically designed to attract stupid tourists and take their money. Roadside giant balls of yarn with a $25 entry or browsing fee. A rooftop bar in New York City with a line all the way down the block and $30 drinks at the bar. Hershey Park. The tourists themselves are not getting their money's worth. And while there may be some kind of spectacle that does lure them in and they do get the chance to see it, they, for one reason or another, are getting ripped off. And the United States is full of tourist traps. All across the nation, someone is out there trying to get your travel dollar. As a frequent traveler myself, I often find myself passing probably more tourist traps than I even realize. How many tourist traps have I seen and unknowingly fallen victim? Victim to. We all have done it at least once. Uh, apparently everybody gets one. Bingo. This begs the question, what is the difference between a tourist destination and a tourist trap? How do you distinguish them? One place that I've talked about traveling to on this channel many times is Florida. I love Florida. Orlando, Florida itself has the second most hotel rooms of any city in the United States, second only to Las Vegas. And you have to think if there are this many places for tourists to stay, there must be traps set for them all around the city. So I hopped on a plane and headed down to Orlando Florida, hunting for tourist traps. Upon arriving, I set to work in my hotel room with a simple Google search, looking for the most obvious, the biggest, and most blatant tourist traps that the Orlando area has to offer. And fortunately or unfortunately, I was unable to find it. But look at this giant wizard that I saw. The giant wizard is in fact a Florida staple. Ruling over International Drive, it's known statewide across the land of Florida, featured in such artistic works as the Florida Project and the behind the scenes footage of the Florida Project. That's right, this wizard co-stars with Willem Dafoe in a film. Interested? I think so. So it's an exciting day here in Orlando, Florida, because I'm gonna go see the wizard. And I hopped into my rental car and cruised down the road for a magical experience. The drive through Orlando was beautiful. As I got closer to the wizard, I knew I was in for a treat since I could see his hat over the skyline from a mile away. Truly, this wizard was an impressive monument to human innovation. Okay, now this, this is exciting. There he is. It's the wizard. There's a giant wizard on the front, man. This is gonna be great. Look at the wizard. And I'm sure at this point you may be wondering what kind of wonders would someone find inside of a wizard like this? And to that I say, have you ever heard of Disney World? If you have, then you know that Disney manufactures a ton of merchandise, like tons. You can get anything you could ever think of there, from a Mickey Mouse t-shirt all the way to a Mickey Mouse keychain. However, as I learned on this trip down to Orlando, in recent years, Disney merch has seen a little bit of a skyrocket in prices. In fact, the average white Disney t-shirt is $37. That's for a short sleeve, cotton t-shirt, $37. But then there are shops like The Wizard all over Florida with discount Disney and Universal gifts inside, claiming to have the best, most authentic, and most affordable merchandise from each theme park. Every single one of them is the best. In fact, even shops that don't claim to be carrying Disney merch are full of discount or ripped off Disney merchandise. Take a look at when you enter fruit gifts. 
The entrance says this is a fruit store. And it is true that some of these shops may be considered tourist traps, with counterfeit or misprinted goods to justify the discount on that item. But at this point, I'm fully expecting the wizard to be a cut above the rest. Let me tell you folks, he's put a spell on me. Hey, look at him. Just look at his eyes. The weight of the world has been felt by this wizard. Inside, you'll find the widest variety of affordable and legitimately obtained pristine theme park goods. This includes these real and never released No Way Home t-shirts, this delightful towel, and look at this. They've got a dressing room for you to try anything on in the whole store, and it's guarded by an armed security guard so that you feel safe. Check out this rack of official lifeguard gear. No swimming tests required. Wear them to the beach. Wear them to the pool. What's stopping you? If you're looking for something for the kids, head on to the back of the store. There's some small characters there that they'll definitely love. For instance, Groot or this brown guy from Star Wars. You remember the brown guy from Star Wars? And if you're not sold, listen to the sound that this thing makes. Don't you want that in your home for your kids to play with? Best of all, this wizard has a smaller wizard for sale inside. And just listen to the sounds that he makes. Don't forget the Disney section where you can get very subtle, very classy Disney clothes at the steeply discounted price from $37 all the way down to $35. But the crown jewel in this wizard's proverbial hat is for sure his collection of Disney pins. We've discussed pins on this channel before and talked about what a great collector's item they are and how oftentimes them being a great collector's item is reflected in the price. Disney pins actually purchased in Disney parks in some cases can range all the way up to the 50s in prices. But here at The Wizard, pins cost $6. You can get your hands on legitimate, real Disney pins right here at The Wizard for $6. Anyways, I bought three of them. I eagerly dropped $18 right into the wizard's pocket and left with my fines and I headed out of the wizard with a smile on my face knowing that I just had a very rewarding and fulfilling Orlando experience. Buddy, Buddy Dyer, Dyer would be proud. And there I was in the parking lot feeling like a new man after seeing everything that the wizard had to offer wondering when I would ever be privileged to have an experience like this ever again until it came to me this was not the right wizard. It's come to my attention there's another wizard that looks just like him 20 minutes away hey everybody hopefully you'll forgive it this is just a quick little interruption from this video of me driving my car to different places so i figured i'd interrupt it from my car while i'm trying to drive to get some coffee because the edit on this video i'm not gonna lie was long and it was tough and i need some coffee but you know what made it a lot easier it's ak racing chairs I have one of these chairs myself. It's excellent for some of these days where I'm just forced to sit in front of my computer editing footage of a giant wizard. When you're in the middle of a 10 hour edit session, it's really great that this chair is so supportive and so comfortable. But don't just listen to me, check out some other reviews. For anybody who games out there, PC Mag actually listed AK Racing as some of the most comfortable chairs for very long gaming sessions. You don't have to get up, you don't have to keep adjusting, you can just focus on the game. IGN also says that the leather upholstery of these chairs means that they're good for up to five years before you have to consider getting a new one. And that's a long time for a chair that you use every single day. AK Racing is also a manufacturer that you can trust who has been around since 2001, originally designing chairs for automotive sports, meaning you're getting that same quality in your gaming or now even your office chair like I use them. So if you want to learn more about AK Racing, and you want to have a really comfortable wizard editing session, check out the link in the description below. It goes a long way to support the channel. Big thank you to AK Racing for making this possible.
You see, when I was Googling tourist traps and came across this beautiful work of art by accident, I saw many glowing reviews of the giant wizard on International Drive. Many of them were saying they didn't understand how they attached this giant wizard head to just a regular store, and neither did I. And I knew I had to contribute. I had to write so that others would know what a great experience I had at Giant Wizard Head, which by the way is the name of the store with the giant wizard head. But upon revisiting the reviews I had already seen, I got a look at some of their pictures, and this wizard was not the same as the wizard I was in front of at that exact moment. There were two wizards on International Drive. Another wizard had captured the hearts and minds of tourists all over the Florida area. So I left the giant wizard head parking lot and made a left onto International Drive. And I drove straight for several minutes until once again I saw a giant wizard hat waiting for me to come visit. And there I was, faced with another giant wizard. Because as they say, they do travel in packs. Going off first impressions, I will say this wizard was a little more happy. His eyes were a little more strained, his trinkets a little smaller. This wizard was more humble. Unlike the first wizard, which didn't bury the lead and called the establishment Giant Wizard Head, this one was just called Magic Castle Gifts. The wizard was just a nice little bonus. The other thing I noticed was a much stronger abundance of tourists. The whole time I was there, minivans full of families of five or six were pulling up to go see the wizard, shop inside the wizard. Why was this one so much more popular? There had to be an answer. Shaking in excitement, I entered the second wizard, ready for a completely unique experience. And that's exactly what I got. For reference, here's what it looked like entering the second wizard versus the first wizard. As you can tell, they're not similar at all. And I can understand to the untrained eye, this may seem like the same experience. Like exactly the same. Wizard in the parking lot, knock off and misprint items right when you enter. A stormtrooper security guard over the dressing room. The fake No Way Home merch. The Dobby towel. Look at this, it's the small wizard. It's the brown guy from Star Wars. It's the wizard's staggeringly beautiful eyes. This is almost the same. However, to the trained eye of a wizard expert, Expert. These are two different, completely separate, and completely valid tourist experiences. For instance, the name of this shop, Magic Castle Gifts, turned out to be quite literal. Forget Magic Kingdom, come see the castle at Magic Castle Gifts. It's full of fairy tale creatures. And also, Spider Man is there. I left the store spending $15.60 feeling like a changed man. A simple trip down International Drive had brought me to two of the most beautiful sights in the entire Sunshine State. What a day. So what am I getting at here? Was the giant wizard head actually a tourist trap? Absolutely, I know that, come on. In fact, these are tourist traps born of one of the biggest tourist destinations in the world. And from what I understand, this to a degree is what living in Orlando is like. You're always in the shadow of giant tourism mega corporations. And then there are some people just trying to do their own thing. Whether it was a trap or not, and whether I'm just gullible, I had an excellent time visiting both wizards. This was a fantastic day. Was I surrounded by junk? You bet. Your enjoyment is based entirely on what you allow yourself to feel and your awareness of the situation. Sometimes all it takes for me to have a good time is a gimmick, like a giant wizard. So while I'm positive that this was in fact a tourist trap, in this case I'm happy I was trapped. I had a great day. There he is! Look at his head! Ever since Steven Tyler spat out the window of his limo at me, I'm not really one to get starstruck or to meet your heroes. But I mean, come on. It was so full of wizard business. Whizbiz, they call that. I'm in the trap. I know I'm in the trap. <laughs>